the video I made about the Chora trips seems to be getting a lot of views recently. I wasn't really sure if that video would be popular, but it seems to be, and uh, I'm glad that people enjoyed it because I find trip reports really interesting. I think they provide a unique insight into the way the mind works, and perhaps they even show a hidden side of reality that we don't know exists. Like one of the things that I find interesting about trip reports is that people consistently report seeing the same things on different drugs. On meth, a lot of people seem to see these shadow creatures that follow them around. Many people just attribute this to the effects of lack of sleep mixed with a heavy stimulant. But I've read so many reports from people that seem to think that these shadow beings are actually real. Uh, messing around with meth gets you involved with dark forces. Some call it the devil's drug. I don't know what the reality of the situation is, but I find it interesting to ponder. And I'm going to read six trip reports that I found on Erowid. In some cases I've edited the stories down a little bit just to make them a bit shorter. It seems like taking meth also makes people very wordy. But if you want to read the reports yourself, I'll put a link in the description. Okay, on with the trip reports. This one was written by Insane. Let me start by saying some background information on me. At 14, I tried my first drug, and from then on, have tried many other drugs. But what I'm doing my report on, methamphetamine, I otherwise call the devil. I've always heard about people who have done meth, and how they can't sleep for days, and drop weight like crazy, and on rare occasions, see what they refer to as the shadows. Now, I didn't know people who were into meth, so the first time I came across someone who had it, I gave it a try. This was at the age of 16, and when I tried it, it had a pinkish colour to it and was in a powder. The only thing that I felt was a slight burn, and that was it. Years passed, and once again meth came into my life, when a co-worker said he had some. This was at age 19, and now within the three years which had passed, I had gained knowledge on meth and how it was various forms, the most potent being in clear shard form, ice as most would call it. My co-worker said he had some ice and gave me a sample. This time around, it was clear and looked just like they call it, broken little shards of ice. I made two lines and snorted one through my nostril and gave the other one to another co-worker. First thing I felt was like I just snorted some jalapeno juice through my nose because that shit burnt. And when I mean burn, I mean it really burns and got tears in my eyes. After a while the burnt feeling went away and I immediately felt so energetic. It felt literally like I was floating. I felt euphoric, my body felt light and very talkative. After this I spent about 6 months using ice via snorting it. And yet I never got the side effects of people who say they can't sleep and all this other stuff. Just changed later when I learned about smoking it. One day I go over to my friend's house and ask him if he wants a line of ice. He says sure and we snort it. It figures he has some ice himself, and he takes out his pipe with a bowl on the end. This is those infamous pipes they no longer sell at gas stations, called Valentine Roses. Well he loads it with ice, and takes out a lighter, and starts heating up the bowl, and inhales the smoke, blowing out huge smoke clouds. Now this is the first time I tried smoking ice. I give it a try, and right away it feels different, and better than snorting it. I felt an immediate rush of adrenaline, and my eyes felt wide open. From now on I smoked it, and this is when all the shit started going downhill. I started wanting it more and more, since it lasts a lot shorter smoking it. After binging for about two days, I then got the effects everybody would talk about. I couldn't sleep for the shit of it. As hard as I would try it just wasn't possible. The thought of eating food would make me gag, so without sleep and food I felt like shit, but the worst was yet to come. One night, while in my basement room trying to sleep, which wasn't happening, I started hearing people outside my bedroom door. I went outside to open it and nobody was there. I would lay back down and it started happening again. I swear I could hear people talking, but yet when I go to turn on the lights, nobody would be there. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see these shadows and think they were people. An extreme paranoia like I never imagined would set in. This was the downfall, and the realisation I needed to quit this shit right away. After about 4 days I would get back to normal. The worst I ever had was at about 1 week without sleep, and dropping down to about 130. 
I would get seriously hot flashes and profusely sweat like no other. I've had my share of binges in the past, but no more. Stay clear away from this drug, as it will tear you apart without you even noticing it. The next report is by Lenore. I was at a three day rave and I'd been taking mainly Adderall and Dexedrine to stay awake. Adderall is about 75% dextroamphetamine and Dexedrine is 100% dextroamphetamine, which metabolizes as methamphetamine. Over the course of Friday 9pm till Sunday 5am I probably had about 350mg combined. By Sunday 5am I began to experience sleep deprivation hallucinations, which is normal for staying awake for that duration of time. I got home at around 9pm and I suddenly started to get paranoid and experienced severe hallucinations. They were unlike any hallucinogenic substance I have ever taken. Instead of morphing into existence or even having objects distort or morph after I saw them, they appeared as if in real life. I knew that they weren't real, but I was still extremely afraid. I mostly saw people out of my window or down my hallway and insects crawling out from underneath doors. All of them were very frightening and were coming towards me. Brightly lit enclosed areas helped to alleviate the hallucinations as well as familiar activities and objects. I finally slept for a few hours and the next day I saw a few hallucinations in the dark and the hallucinations disappeared after the next night. I remained extremely paranoid, especially when riding in cars for the next week. The next day after the experience I had to ride in a car and I took an anti-anxiety medication to keep myself from practically having a heart attack. My breathing rate had elevated and my heart rate remained elevated to 100 to 120 beats per minute for the next 4 days. The next report is by I Should Be Locked Up. I'm writing this report a good 8 years after it took place, so some of the details are a little hazy. However, of all the drug induced experiences that I've ever had, this one in particular stands out in my memory. In order to give the reader a feel for the situation, I will first briefly discuss the state of my life at the time. When I was in my late teens, I was a little excessive when it came to the consumption of chemical substances. I put myself through a lot of dodgy situations. I met some of the most fucked up, dangerous people I have ever met. Unfortunately, the lack of education, coupled with illogical laws that surround this aspect of modern society, allowed an essentially law-abiding yet inquisitive teenager the ability to obtain cheap and powerful mind-altering substances at an age when one lacks the stability and confidence needed to deal with the subjective effects of drug use. When I was 15 I got into acid, as well as to a lesser extent mushrooms. Which was great, I had some fun times. However, supplies of acid suddenly dried up. What was a young person to do? Well, the answer lay at my local dealer, amphetamines. They'd always been available, but I wasn't interested before. I liked the multi-dimensional journeys and mystical experiences, but I wasn't into taking drugs for the buzz. I started taking speed all the time. Every other day for a period of about six months. Me and a group of friends would simply neck or snort loads of the stuff and sit around talking like maniacs. The situation was a recipe for disaster and ended up with many problems. During the height of this speed binging, I felt a need to do something extreme, to experience all that this drug could do. I was well aware of the hallucinogenic nature of the come down, be this caused by the drug itself or by lack of sleep or food. So as a desperate act of self-sacrifice, I offered myself up to the insane god by launching into a binge to end all binges. For three days and three nights, me and a few cronies consumed gram after gram of yellow tinged crystal base. What we did for those three days I can't recall, but on the fourth day we decided to drive to a local forest that some of the friends had been camping in over the weekend. These guys had been on some kind of drug fueled pilgrimage walking 20 odd miles into the woods, then setting up camp within its darkest depths. So the scene was set. My plan was to stop taking speed the night we got into the woods and then let the effects of four days of binging take effect and see what happened. I suppose I thought at the time that this would be the grand finale to my amphetamine trip, a last blast before I quit. 
We finally made it into the forest, me and two others, plus about four or five guys who were already there. We'd all been taking speed, but only I had been on it for four days straight. The night passed and we joked and laughed around the campfire. We got real stoned and took the last of the speed. I remember everyone talking about a multicoloured bubble that had enveloped our group, cutting us off from the outside world. At first light I was starting to feel kind of unstable, like being in some kind of eerie waking dream. I felt the urge to walk, to explore the beautiful area that we were in, that had until this point been shrouded in darkness. So I went off, my only intention being to gather my bearings. From this point onwards I slowly started to slip into the most bizarre, quasi-schizophrenic state of mind that I've ever been in. The visuals of LSD or mushrooms can be pretty intense, but I know that this is the effect of the drug that is causing them, and they move so fleetingly and quickly that it's more like watching a show that you know will be over. The state of mind I found myself in that morning was incredibly real. It was like the world gradually changed around me, over a period of many hours. What started as an idea, or maybe a delusion in my mind, slowly seeped into reality, until it took over. It wasn't like I had a physical rush that brought on the effects. It was real. It all happened as part of the experience of my reality. It was my neurotransmitters that were causing this trip. Anyway, here's what I experienced. As I walked, I started to think of an idea about how the forest could be inhabited by fairies. I started following the small tracks that weaved around the plants. I realised that in some places there were more tracks than others, and many of the tracks appeared to lead to certain places. For example, a certain large tree, or a river. As I wandered around these tracks, it seemed that there was a certain intelligence in the way they were designed. This thought developed into a feeling that I was being led. I saw figures and heard voices. The backs of little men brushing just ahead, out of sight in the undergrowth. They felt friendly, like guides. Not too similar to people, like little woodsmen. I could hear their voices and feel their intentions, and I felt that they wanted to show me something of the real nature of the forest. These became the Woodsman Fairies. Following the Woodsman, I took up their offer and tried to open up my mind to what I was being shown. Firstly, they took me to the river, where there were great banks of mud. The banks looked like cities. The dirt was sculpted like a natural form of architecture. I saw the river as a teeming colony of faces and intelligences. Big frog-like creatures protruding from the banks wallowing in mud, belching and burping. The woodsman informed me, through some sort of telepathic link, that these strange creatures were the mud fairies, messy things that didn't care much for people, creatures of earth and water. A lot of the visions and information that I saw on this trip I can't now remember but there was a lot more detail than I can recall. After this I was introduced to the trees. I saw the trees as they really were. Beautiful and ancient, each with its own heart and mind. More ancient and wise than man could imagine. They were great spectators on the world, aware of the comings and goings of mankind but aloof. They existed here in this world in their true form, powerful creatures in control of the woods. I saw them writhe and give off light. I felt great waves of ecstasy as I felt the joy in which they lived. The woodsman told me that they were the most powerful of all creatures in the wood and that they could control my experience here. Whilst I was under the trees, I was in their control. Many more revelations I received as I gazed upon the trees about their true nature and its power, yet also its beauty. After I'd realized the true nature of the trees, the forest became like a living world of intelligence around me. It was incredible. I was amazed at what I was experiencing. I was totally lost in it. I was given a tour of all the features of the wood places that would look like ordinary forest parts to the normal eye, but to me and my woodland friends I saw cities, roads and palaces. After a time they brought me to a deep part of the woods, a dense area of pine and yew. It was very dark and brooding. This, I was informed, was the dark forest, a place of trees that had gone evil and lost their light and hated men. If I entered, I was warned that I would go insane. They would take my soul and show me terrifying visions. The place oozed horror, and as I gazed in, I saw monsters lurking in the darkness. I turned away from the dark woods and headed back towards our camp. I eventually found everyone and attempted to tell them about my adventure. 
Most people just ignored me, telling me to shut up. No one was experiencing anything like I was. So, a little put out, I returned to my forest world. My friend, who I will call Kay, came with me, and as we walked, I described the world that I had seen. Kay started to make up his own ideas to add to the story, as if what I was experiencing I was making up as a story. Kay was annoying me intensely by adding his ideas. He seemed like a fool who didn't realise that what I was telling him was real. So eventually I told him to piss off. Now things really started to hot up. The forest enveloped me more than ever, but I felt that there was more to come. I came upon the dark forest again, and I realised that the dark woods were a gateway into the heart of this forest trip. I figured that if I could enter and pass through the dark forest, then I would discover something incredible on the other side. So I set off. As I walked, the evil forces of the dark forest tried to entice me. They tried to lock me inside their trunks. They showed me the trapped souls of men who had fallen prey to them, twisting visions in the corner of my eyes of screaming tortured souls. I felt hands pulling at my back. At one point I had an incredibly realistic hallucination of a man running up behind me with an axe screaming as he hit me. I turned in shock and he vanished. I saw beasts and monsters stalking on either side. Fallen trunks and old stumps became wolves and demons chasing me deeper into the wood. This was terrifying. I felt like I was on my last legs and at any moment would collapse and die, my soul ripped from inside by the devilish forces around me. I came deliriously upon an old twisted stump of a yew tree, standing alone in a clearing. It became a living, twisted old hag at the centre of this dark place. It cackled at me, telling me to turn back or die, then became like a thousand snakes and melted into the undergrowth. And yet I pressed on, determined to find an end to this evil place. Then, as the terror of the dark forest reached a crescendo, I emerged into a light clearing. Before me was a massive old tree. An ancient face seemed to appear in its bark, and it spoke in a solemn voice that was soothing and yet all-encompassing. It certainly didn't speak in English, but in my delirium I could understand it perfectly. It explained that I had reached the heart of this trip, and that all I was experiencing was part of my own unconscious mind. The fairies were personifications of my own character, and that he, the tree, was the core of my being. The voice in my head, and a voice of reason. I had been through the darkest recesses of my mind to get there, yet my mind was vast, as vast as the forest around me, and that wherever I went from now on, I would be on my own within my own mind, and could, if I chose, learn more of myself the further I ventured. Everything the tree communicated made sense, and the visions of the fairies seemed to fall into place around me. I pressed on into the wood, determined to find something. By this time I was extremely fatigued, I was staggering around talking to myself, and must have looked a right mess. The whole experience became more and more unpleasant. The woodsmen seemed to have pissed off and I kept thinking wild fairies who lived in the bushes were coming out and poking me and whispering about me behind their backs. Suddenly I found myself in a clearing. Two huge trees had fallen down side by side. One had opened up a cave-like hole with its root, and the other had gone the other way with its branches flailing in the air. I stared at this vision, and as I did, the cave deepened, becoming a long, infinite tunnel, and the fallen tree writhed around like the tentacles of an octopus. I almost dropped my knees with an overwhelming sensation that I had found something meaningful, the dark cave and the octopus. What it meant I didn't know, and still don't, yet this was it the end and my mind and body knew it. I suddenly had a flash of realisation. I was tired, hungry and lost in the middle of the woods, without a clue where any of my friends were. I panicked a bit but managed to find the edge of the forest, which I left and felt much better for it. The outside seemed far saner than the forest. After a while I bumped into my friends, it was about 10am and I had been lost in the woods for about 4 to 5 hours. I tried to explain what I'd been through, but still couldn't quite believe it myself. Was it me or was it the drugs? Had I just had an eye-opening revelation into the true nature of the forest, or was I suffering the classic speed-induced psychosis? 
Long after my experience, I read about shamanism and similar cultural phenomenon and discovered that such trance experiences are not uncommon after long periods of sleep deprivation or starvation. Unfortunately, we lack the experts and so my story remains just that, a story. The next report is by Saint Sinner. I've read stories of people binging for days on end and go into full psychosis mode. The first few times of using it I experienced nothing but euphoria and alertness, but this time it was more than that. My first hit was at about 4pm. I felt euphoria and I kept talking non-stop to my friends. All of them were high as well. Redosed another 0.1 gram for the next two hours. Nothing much to report except the same feelings of euphoria and alertness. At about 11pm I smoked my last 0.1 of a gram and went home. My body starts to get aches, which is not unusual for me, and my fingers and feet are starting to tingle. This is where things start to get worse. At around 3am the tingling in my feet and my fingers starts to get worse and I begin to panic and I get super paranoid thinking that they were going to fall off. I took one milligram of lorazepam to help my panic attacks but it didn't work so I took another three together with some generic muscle relaxants. Usually when I'm on meth this will knock me out within 30 minutes. However this time it was different and I became even more alert and paranoid. At 11am, 12 hours after my last dose, I began hearing weird noises coming from outside my room. I brushed it off thinking it was just my noisy neighbourhood. My fingers were still tingling and my body was heating up and my heart was beating irregularly. I felt like I was going to have a full on heart attack. At about 1pm the noises subsided but I started seeing shadow people in my room. I've read online that you only see shadow people if you take high doses and you haven't slept in more than 3 days. My dose is considered low and I woke up at 1pm the day before so it was only about 12 hours since I last slept. The shadow people appear when I stare at the wall for about 15 seconds. The wall would suddenly become like a glass and I could literally see right through it like it's another dimension behind my wall with two shadow people talking to each other. I freaked the fuck out and looked to my bed with the clothes on it. My clothes then started morphing into weird faces and they looked like they were talking to me. I freaked out again and threw my clothes on the floor. I tried to do things to distract myself but every time I stopped and looked in my peripheral vision I would see apparitions floating towards me and streaks of light that would suddenly turn into white particles of dust that would land on my skin and make me itch all over. The colours around me became darker and my skin suddenly looked brown. This lasted for at least 4 hours and I thought I should have come down by then since it was more than 12 hours since my last dose. The shadow people stopped appearing after 6 hours into my first hallucination but I still saw apparitions and inanimate objects in my room float and morph. I began having auditory hallucinations. This time I kept hearing satanic music being played on my laptop. I was so freaked out I kept asking my mom if she could hear them but she kept saying it was just the fan on my laptop making those noises. After what felt like forever and about 26 hours after my last dose I took a 15mg of mirtazapine to help me sleep. Surprisingly I managed to sleep within the next hour. The next few days however were really bad. Both my body and my mind felt like I was in some sort of accident and I kept having really bad anxiety for the next week. This whole meth experience didn't even feel like I took meth, but some kind of weird psychedelic drug that made me hallucinate like crazy. This report is by Maze413. I've done lots of drugs in my time. Through about 5 years of using pretty much everything, I've only had one bad trip, methamphetamine. One day I was chilling with one of my brothers and we decided to grab a gram of crystal. I'd done it about four times before this, sniffing and snorting it. This particular time we smoked the whole batch. It started off as a typical high, feeling kind of funny, alerted senses, etc. Then my brother got real tired and wanted to sleep. I was wide awake, no sleep in sight, so I left his room and went to mine right next door. As I laid in bed watching TV, I started to see a man in my closet pointing at me. Every time I looked away and looked back, he'd be in a different position, still making eye contact and pointing at me. At this point I got scared because the guy was somebody I knew and had fought with before. 
So this guy I didn't like was in my closet and pointing at me like he was out to get me. I'd look away and look back a bunch of times and this shit just kept happening. I felt like I was officially crazy. Then, as if that wasn't enough, I started to see my brother through the window reflection hiding under my bed. I could literally see him pointing at me through the reflection. So I'm scared shitless. I decide I have to sleep now so it'll go away. I take five Walgreens brand sleeping pills, lay down and shut my eyes. Eventually, I fall asleep. Periodically, throughout the night, I would wake up and see spiders. I would swipe them away because they were jumping towards me, and then fall back to sleep. This happened a few times during the night. There was always a big spider and a bunch of baby jumping spiders, always jumping towards my face. When I woke up, I remembered all this shit, and I saw bugs on my bedspread. I ended up spraying my whole bed, every sheet with raid. Every layer I took off, there were still more spiders, and no matter where I was, they were always jumping towards my face. So my room smelled like raid, all my sheets are being washed, and I go into my brother's room. I still see spiders everywhere. I tell them they're on his couch, and now they're on my shirt, so I take off my shirt and spray it with raid, and then put it back on. My brother says, why don't you just change your shirt? I get confused. Then my brother checks my room and says, if there were bugs on your bed, they'd be dead all over. And then there was nothing, so I realised I was tweaked. Up to this point I felt like I had been thinking rationally. Then it hit me. I messed up. It took about four more hours before I really started thinking straight. I spent that time in my brother's room with him laughing at me. Take what you want from this story. It's not a deterrent or promoting its use, because I don't care what you do. This report was written by Saint Jimmy. Before this trip on methamphetamine, I'd been using meth heavily for around two months. On this day, I was visiting my hometown from college for my birthday. When I got off the airplane, I was in very bad condition. My boyfriend M picked me up and took me to a hotel to celebrate my birthday with my cousin C and C's girlfriend A. M had recently made a large drug pickup and we had surplus amounts of methamphetamine on our hands. So as soon as we got settled into the hotel, we started snorting lines and smoking. For a while, everything was like a normal meth trip. We all became hyper creative and started drawing. I decided to lay down on the bed. From where I was laying, the ceiling looked like it was made of water. It was warping and flowing and changing colours constantly. It was weird but very pretty. When C and A came into the room, I've pointed out this phenomenon to A. Apparently C and A could see the water ceiling as well, so we all laid down on the bed to watch the show. M wanted nothing to do with this, because he knows the warning signs of a meth freakout, and this is one of the signs. However, I was totally oblivious to this fact. After about 10 minutes, A sat up and noticed that a large vortex was forming in the corner of the hotel room. From this vortex, which looked like a smoky grey cube imploding on itself, emerged hundreds of shadowy figures. They were roughly human in shape and seemed to be composed entirely of shadows. They had no facial features or clothing or any type of distinguishing marks. Being avid researchers of the paranormal, we instantly recognised these creatures to be shadow people. Panic quickly set in as the shadow people began to circle the room. At some point, M finally put down his pen and joined the chaos that was rapidly forming in the room. C, A and I were huddling in one of the beds together, hyperventilating and in a general state of panic. Shadow people might not sound too frightening to those who know nothing about them, but as people who understand these creatures, we knew enough to be terrified. Shadow people are not malevolent beings, they are horrible extra-dimensional beings that prey on human energy. Not a good situation to be in when we're spun and paranoid as it is. We began talking about what we thought the shadow people were and came to the conclusion that they were beings from another dimension that had entered our dimension through the vortex. Methamphetamine had allowed our bodies to vibrate at a higher resonance than usual and this attracted the shadow people. C decided that smoking more meth would make the shadow people go away. So A and I sat on the edge of the bed while C held the pipe and lit it for us. In retrospect, I realised that this was a horrible idea. All it did was make the experience even more intense. Finally, M jumped in and fed A and I some Xanax to calm us down. Unfortunately, nothing happened. 
the shadow people continued to assault our senses and terrify us. M and A decided that they would attempt to take photos of the shadow people with their cell phones. So they took off on an expedition to the bathroom, which for some reason seemed like the best place to take photos to all of us. C and I sat on the end of the bed and waited for their return. Soon a mass about the size of a human torso began forming underneath the table. It was a large translucent blob with no discernible form. C and I started screaming for M and A to come back into the room. The blob started speaking to me telepathically, telling me that it was going to spiritually possess me and use my body to murder my friends. As it was speaking it began to climb up my body. It inserted three tentacles into my navel and began to enter my body. When the tentacles touched me I felt a sensation similar to ice cold needles being pushed through my skin. I wanted to get up and run away but the creature had me completely paralysed. A started screaming for me to run and for M and C to do something, but they just stood there dumbfounded. A took matters into her own hands and took a flying leap at the creature and tackled it, ripping it out of my body. M grabbed me under my arms and C grabbed my legs and carried me to the other bed. During this my body was still completely frozen. They dumped me on the bed and tried to get me to respond for a few minutes, but I was unable to move or speak. I have very vague memories of what happened next. All I recall is A telling me that the creatures had gone. After I came back from my state of paralysis, M ordered me into the shower. I refused and started crying, telling him that the shadow people were in the shower and I didn't want to be in the same place as them. M grabbed me by the arm and basically dragged me into the bathroom. He undressed me and shoved me into the shower and then climbed in after me. I became completely hysterical, seeing shadow people all around me. I huddled up in a ball, making myself as small as humanly possible. At this point I doubt I was coherent. I was babbling while sobbing and shaking and trying to hide in the shower. All I remember is M spitting in my face and shaking me as hard as he could and yelling at me to calm down. Eventually he got me calm enough to actually take a shower and the shadow people were mostly gone by this time. He dried me off and dressed me because I was incapable of doing it myself and walked me out of the bathroom. C looked totally drained and M was laying on the bed sobbing and exhausted. M and I climbed into our bed and after a while of laying in bed in a state of total paranoia we finally drifted off for a few hours of sleep. The shadow people stayed with me for a few months. I saw them constantly, even when I wasn't high. I personally believe that what we saw that night was real. M disagrees and believes that everything we saw was drug induced. To further complicate the matter is the subject of the photos. We all saw shadow people in those photos when we reviewed them at a later time. Today however M claims that there is nothing in those photos and they have all mysteriously disappeared from his phone. I think that he's in denial and doesn't want to face what the four of us went through and so he deleted the photos. Meth basically ruined my life through a long series of events. In the end I ended up with methamphetamine induced schizophrenia. So what do you think? Are these experiences purely drug induced hallucinations or is there something deeper to them? If people like this video I might do some more trip reports in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you're not already. I upload regular creepy content. Until next time, goodbye.